A good night's sleep is essential for all of us. Our guest today is Dr. Peter Fatanakis, and he's the medical director of the St. Joseph Hospital Sleep Disorder Center in Orange, California. Peter, thanks for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. You know, looking at your emails, it looks three in the morning, four in the morning to me, it looks like you don't sleep either. And I haven't slept since I was in medical school 40 years ago. So sleep disorders is a big, big issue. Why don't you tell me, you, you had a big sleep center in Orange County. What, what goes on in a sleep center exactly? Um, people always know about the tests that are done in sleep centers, and people stay overnight to have these tests done, but St. Joseph's Hospital Sleep Disorder Center is a full service center. It's accredited by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So we not only take care of breathing disorders such as sleep apnea, but we also take care of insomnia, parasomnias, which are things like sleepwalking, night terrors, and also narcolepsy and other disorders where people are too sleepy in the daytime. And then we have all the insomniacs, the people who can't sleep at night. And everybody who goes there has the same evaluation? You put electrodes on, how do you, how do you actually do it? Um, it depends, sometimes doctors refer patients in for testing alone and we'll do the night tests on them. And other times doctors will refer the patients directly to me uh, to sort out what the problem is. And then I go through a regular consultation where I ask the patients their history and I go through an examination to determine what we need to do with them. If it's something like sleep apnea, then they may have a test done at night where they spend the night with us and we put electrodes on them so that we can monitor them. If it's insomnia, sometimes all we do is we have them keep a sleep diary where we monitor their sleep night by night over several weeks time so we can see what the pattern of sleep disorder is. So with the, with the full blown sleep study where the electrodes are for the brain or the heart, or what, how is the monitoring done? The sleep study is actually called a polysomnogram and it's Greek for many writings. So what we're doing is we're examining many different things in the body when somebody's asleep. We look at their brain waves so we can tell whether they're awake or asleep. We look at their eye movements so that we can see if they're in REM sleep or dream sleep. We look at their respiratory status, how much effort they're putting into their breathing and whether there's air coming out of their nose and mouth. And we look at their heart rhythms so if we can see if the heart's skipping beats. And we also look at movements so that we can see if they're jerking their legs in their sleep because there are certain disorders that have to do with leg movements. You give this back to the doctor, you say this is what you have and then you come up with a prescription for treatment. Correct. And so the most common thing that you treat there would be sleep apnea, what would it be? Yeah, sleep apnea is a very common problem in our society. It's probably related to our societies becoming an obese society and obesity is associated with snoring and apnea. The co most common symptom of apnea is snoring at night and people who snore on a regular basis most often have problems with breathing, which is what apnea is. It's, it means without breath. What are the effects like on your heart and on the rest of your body? Um, it does two basic things. Uh, when people have apnea, they have to wake up to breathe over and over again during the night. So they have significant sleep fragmentation. So no matter how long they sleep, they end up feeling tired and sleepy in the daytime. And the second thing is, is that each time they stop breathing, they're straining to breathe. And so that puts a strain on the heart and lungs. And the strain, even though it's very minor, it adds up night after night after night. And it leads into a higher risk of high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, heart failure, all kinds of nasty things that can be prevented if it's treated early. Is it true that sometimes unexplained uh, blood pressure elevations in the morning could be due to sleep apnea? Yes, uh, there's a much higher risk of hypertension or high blood pressure when somebody has untreated apnea. And many of our patients will actually reverse their blood pressure problems or at least reduce the number of medications they might be taking for their blood pressure if they treat their apnea adequately. So would it be blood pressure rises in the morning that would be a clue that they, have, that they may have sleep apnea or would it be a blood pressure rise before they go to sleep that may be a clue or? Um, anybody who has hypertension, sustained high blood pressure day or night uh, is suspect. So if you come up with a diagnosis of sleep apnea, these are some of the things that you can treat them with, right? Yeah, one of the most common treatments for sleep apnea is nasal CPAP. CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. When somebody has snoring and sleep apnea, essentially what they're doing is they're sucking their airway closed in their throat. And when that happens, uh, we can reverse that using a device like this. It's a small mass that goes over the nose, or there may be other types of masks that go into the nostrils. 
And essentially, this little machine is like an air pump. It pumps air into the nose to the throat area so that as somebody is trying to suck their throat closed, it blows it up like a balloon and keeps it open so that they can continue to breathe when they're asleep. Now, how do you adjust the pressure in this? Some people, is it one set pressure or does it, are there different pressures for different people and different prolong, you know, different duration of the pressure? How does that work? Uh, the pressure might change throughout the night, but the highest pressure that's needed is during dream sleep when all the muscles in the body become very relaxed. And so we set the pressure during one of the sleep steadies. When the patient's actually staying overnight with us, that's when the, the proper mask is chosen and we adjust the pressure for their needs because every, every patient needs a different pressure. I see. This may be a dumb question. If they come in for a sleep study and they can't sleep, what do you do? What happens then? <laughs> we have this you giant a mallet. A <laughs> you get a refund? <laughs> yeah. No, uh, surprisingly, most people end up sleeping. Um, you know, looking over about a thousand patients that came into our laboratory over the last year, I think I can only remember about one or two patients who did not sleep during the entire night. And usually that's because of a lot of anxiety yeah. or claustrophobia or something. But even patients who come in and have insomnia, we put on the electrodes and they fall asleep. And some of them sleep a lot more in the laboratory than they actually do at home. Oh, is that right? Now, you also have another appliance there for the, um, looks like, a pair of dentures? Or? This is also for treatment of sleep apnea. And basically, it's a dental appliance. This may be made by a dentist. There's probably about 50 of these on the market, and they all do the basic same thing. As you can see here, uh, what happens is when you have this in your mouth, it pulls your lower jaw forward. Your tongue is attached to your lower jaw. So as your jaw comes forward, it pulls the tongue away from the back of the throat and opens the airway. Uh, the trouble is, is that it's also pulling on your jaw joint, so it's a matter of whether or not you can open the airway up or develop jaw pain. I see. And so they work about 50% of the time, and you have to try them to see if they work or if they cause problems. But they are an alternative, and they're a non-invasive alternative in that there's not too many bad side effects associated. So who should be referred to a sleep center? What about just plain old insomnia that's unrelated to sleep apnea? Do those people see you? Oh yeah, we, we see a lot of insomniacs. Probably about 25% of our sleep population are people who have trouble sleeping. Many insomniacs are actually treated by their primary care physicians. Mm -hmm. And we get the hardcore people that have been having trouble for a long time. And uh, we try to sort out their problems to determine what the underlying cause of insomnia is in that a particular person. What should somebody look for in a sleep center if they want to have this done? Uh, there must be many out there and they're probably not all the same quality I would imagine. Oh yes, uh, uh, Orange County probably has one of the highest density of sleep centers in the whole U.S. But out of all these sleep centers, there's only a few of them that are accredited by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. And in these accredited centers, you're guaranteed to find a board certified sleep specialist mm -hmm. and certified uh, uh, respiratory therapists that do the testing on them. And they're also full service centers, ones that take care of not only breathing disorders, but all sleep disorders. Well, thank you very much. It was fascinating. Sure. I'll be your next patient. <laughs> Thanks for having me.